Hey guys, EST here, and it's time to talk about those fancy new BPA-free linings in cans. Are they better? Are they worse? Do they store longer? Do they store for less time? Are they more dangerous? Are they all a scam? I've heard that and everything in between, and which is true between it? Well, kind of all of what I just said. It's complicated, but let's start at the beginning. BPA, what is it? Well, it's bisphenol A. That might even be how you pronounce it. So is it bad for humans? Absolutely. That seems to be the consensus as, as far as 2022 goes. But what quantity? And does it affect adults? And does it affect both genders? The answer is, nobody really seems to know. So let's just start with the FDA banning it uh, from baby bottles and sippy cups in 2011. So the theory, the proof, the studies, and everything in between all pointed to, okay, you at least shouldn't give it to babies. Especially when they put everything in their mouths, and if you're wondering why that is, it's because the nerve density is higher in their lips than their fingers. And they don't really have the finger dexterity to investigate the world that way. So even back in 2011, it was banned from some products, and a little bit before that, some individual states banned it. So, problem solved, right? Not even close. So it was actually invented in 1957, and yes, if you're watching my recent video, that is the same year that monkeypox was discovered. 57, great year. So what does it cause in the human body if it's in you know, sufficient quantities? Well, this has been established. Cancer, diabetes, fertility problems, and hormone disorders, all of which are extremely serious. So like I said before, nobody knows what amount is harmful and what demographic of humans would be affected by it. But we know that it does do something in some quantities. And of course, younger people are affected more heavily. So allegedly, one side of things says when it goes through your intestines, it gets turned into another molecule that isn't harmful at all. But that was quoted in a PDF on like what I would just consider, and this is just my opinion, basically a fake nonprofit that was funded by, you know, a big chemistry conglomerate or multi you know company thing. And this document and this website were like the definition of you have to have an IQ lower than a potato to, to like take any of this at face value. It could just be paraphrased by anyone with a functioning brain as we don't want to retool our equipment or spend slightly more and we want to keep making this stuff. So it's actually good and not harmful. Look at all the stuff we make. It helps save the third world by poisoning them. So even they came to the conclusion because they would just get sued to oblivion if they outright lied on this website. And so did the, the anti-BPA people. They all came to the conclusion that we don't know how much is harmful to humans, but the less the better because we don't know how much is harmful to humans. So just keep that in mind. But now you're seeing everything, especially in like, you know, 2020 onward, say BPA-free bottle, BPA-free can, BPA-free this, that, and the other thing. There's two reasons why that's not quite legitimate. One, BPA has been around since 57. It's, it was in a ton of different plastics. And because they kind of made their way into the environment and then especially the groundwater because under temperatures above about 121 Fahrenheit or ultraviolet light or both or time or we don't even know, it gets into the water, water goes into other water. So almost all groundwater in like basically the entire world has been contaminated with it. However, the tests that we have to detect it can detect down to the like parts per billion scale. And I think like the couple deadliest compounds that I know on the planet, you can tolerate several parts per billion. Although it's more about cumulative than density. And how much can your body process and what when it goes into your intestines can turn it into a allegedly not harmful molecule? That's what we don't seem to know. So the biggest problem that people saw besides, okay, you know, baby products, because duh, was the uh, bottled water craze of what, 15 years ago? But people were saying, oh, it's not harmful. You have to reach 121 Fahrenheit. Who would do that? Why are you going to boil your water in a, in a water bottle in the plastic? It's fine. But also one, ultraviolet light. And that's why they uh, put about a two-year expiration date on all plastic bottles. And two, guess what temperature it gets in the back of a box truck that's not refrigerated on its way to Walmart? In the hot sun in the summer. So they're finding BPA everywhere. So anybody who says, oh, it's BPA free, that's not technically true. But why is it an even bigger lie? Here's the one that'll really anger you. A lot of the companies just switched to BPS, bisphenol S. It also accumulates in the human body and it's just as active with hormonal disruption and similar problems. It's basically the same thing, but they could write BPA free because it's BPS. So that's not good. Also, uh, it's yet to be litigated against. It absolutely should be. Companies that did this are complete scum. And some other variants are bisphenol F and badge, which is bisphenol A diglycidyl ether. And if I recall, those are considered safe to humans right now. 
Oh, and that last one is uh, just nicknamed Badge because that's what it spells. Now, another one is uh, BPANI, which means BPA no intent. So for companies that are obsessed with accuracy, that's, I guess, what they've been labeling it. Because, you know, one part per billion, oh, that would be false advertising if we said it had none. I think it's all a bit silly. Um, I've got a little bit easier thing for you to look for. You know, at least in America, and I think other countries do this, um, how there's a number on the bottom of plastics to tell you wh what type of recycling it is. It's a number one through seven, with seven being uh, everything else or miscellaneous or other. BPA is going to potentially be in something that's three, six, or seven. The other numbers are fine because they just don't use it. So that's super important for 55 gallon storage drums. That's why I wanted to make this video. You're probably five minutes in and you're like, what does this have to do with the topic of your channel? Well, one, it's interesting too. We're getting into food preservation. I just did a lot of research and wanted to inform you guys as informed as I am now. So other alternatives are glass. And if you could just get a glass water bottle, that's great. Stainless steel, a good true stainless. It'll last about 12 years usually. So that's decent too. Um, I do wonder about the seals on some of them, but usually I think there's some kind of vinyl or silicone. As far as like cans or you know temporary or long-term storage or whatever, really acrylic and polyester are good. Uh, as far as the inside lining, obviously the outside is metal, but the inside is like, uh, for lack of a better term, laminated to make it waterproof and you know so that acidic things or rust or just whatever doesn't affect the metal. So unfortunately, I looked at which brands tend to use acrylic and polyester, and it's like. Super high-end organic stuff, unfortunately, like Amy's, Wild Planet, uh, Muir Glen, or however you say it. Some of their products or some of those companies use them. Uh, I'm really just reading off a list of ones that are absolutely top-tier BPA-free. Eden Foods, Clown Prince, they're pretty good, but a lot of these, like, they only sell very specific things. Like, one of them was only seafood and only organic, and it's only sold, you know, in one area. If you want something a little bit more widespread, although I don't think we have either of these where I live... Whole Foods and Trader Joe's, they're pretty big on BPA-free. And last I checked, Trader Joe's has an entire section on their website for BPA-free product lists. And I think they're like somewhat verified, but then again, BPA-free can mean anything. Could just be BPS, really hard to tell. But the, the brands I said earlier, acrylic and polyester, of course not sponsored, but like those will last basically forever. But if you're gonna spend 10 times as much, you might as well just go dry goods and Mylar because then you're all set. And if you're about to ask, does Mylar contain BPA? Good question, except I just said it's a stiffening and hardening agent. But in case you missed that, no, it does not. And you know what? Canned vegetables and stuff aren't very good. Canned meats, okay, you kinda do wanna spend as much as you can. So it all comes down to budget. I mean, you know, two full days worth of rice is like 50 cents plus about 25 more cents for the, the Mylar and the oxygen absorber. So go check out my other video if you want to just do it yourself and be BPA free and you're all good. But do you need to eliminate every trace of BPA from your life? Probably not. People are not like dropping dead or, you know. Well, I guess I think one in three people get cancer in their lifetime. So hard to say what it was 100 years ago because I'm not sure they even knew what cancer was. But they didn't have computers with big databases of medical records. But here's the thing. Okay, this is why I'm mentioning BPA or making a video on it at all. If you were to leave a can sitting in moderate but not crazy temperatures, the best you can, for 10, 20, 30 years, and then you pop it open and eat it, how much BPA could be in there? And the answer is potentially a lot. I don't know if that's ever been experimented on, but that could result in levels that are like really immediately dangerous. And the last thing you want is in some collapse, you know, situation or really tight food supply where you've got to eat this is to also develop some, you know, endocrine related thing or cancer or whatever. Or fertility problems. So I would go BPA free no matter what, but you might want to like, you could like contact the company or find some online lists, but although get multiple lists because I've seen uh, people just saying, here's a list of ones that are BPA free. And it's just ones that are self-reported BPA free. You've almost got to go straight to the company's website and actually just note what the website URL is and then go to Google, type in BPA and then space and then site colon and then their URL. So like stevesdiscountfoods.com. And it will find any reference to BPA on their own website. Now, it doesn't always work. Maybe they neglected to mention it. But, like, I, I just the first one I thought of was Libby's because they're really cheap. They got a lovely website, but I tried that trick. Absolutely nothing. No reference to it at all. So, they're either hiding from the fact that they are still using BPA. Or they don't want to comment on the fact that they're using BPS. Or they just forgot to put it up there. I, we don't know. But you go to Amy's Foods, they will tell you all about it. How they removed BPA before it was illegal. I think Edward and Sons, they talk about it a lot too, but like I said, they're kind of real specific, real small, real 
Narrow categories of somewhat expensive food. If you're going to spend a ton of money on food, don't even mess with canned goods. Just get freeze-dried. That stuff will last just about forever. But if you just go to the cheapest grocery store and get the cheapest brand and look on it and say, well, it doesn't say anything about BPA. Eh, it'll be fine. Or it says BPA-free, but eh, I don't feel like researching it because it's cheap and I don't want to know and I'm sure it'll be fine. You could just be stocking like a ticking time bomb full of poison. And then if you tend to leave stuff on the shelf longer than, you know, oh, I'll eat it sometime this month. You know, you're like, oh, this expired a year ago. I better actually eat it and cycle it out. Oops, I don't want to waste it or throw it away. Uh, if it's been on the shelf for like basically three, four years or whatever, that might have a lot of BPA in it at that point. So that's why BPA is so important to preppers. Now, another thing, especially with the plastic bottles, is that um, back when they were made with BPA, which basically none of them are now, at least for water bottles or, you know, bottled water products is that that plastic was actually permeable. So it can let all kinds of things from the environment into the water. That was like the second reason that they tended to have a two year expiration date. It was the plastic itself and it's things coming through the plastic. So you might think, oh, plastic, it's waterproof. Well, not over time and not perfectly, not if it has BPA. But bottled water, yeah, I've got like a case. It's nice to have and you can certainly like wash something with it, but it almost just rather go somewhere with fresher water and then filter it or have it in 55 gallon drums. Now I don't have just, oh, my whole back guard is full of, you know, 10 of them. I got bleach in it and I've wrote a date on it and I cycle them every three years or whatever you're supposed to do. That's a little much, that's a little obvious. It's a little silly, um, but I do have a rain barrel and a whole bunch of water filters. So I use the rain barrel, uh, which is 55 gallon barrel, obviously. I use that for my garden, but then at any given time, I've got, you know, around 50 some gallons of water that I could filter and drink and boil and clean with. So if you go on that scale, or you're going to a project like that, try to get BPA free ones. Otherwise it, it literally just sits outside in the hot temperatures in the sun. Like you would not want to drink that. And it's still not clear. I couldn't really find a clear answer on this. If for sure BPA gets filtered perfectly by most filters and all filters work differently. I can virtually guarantee that the molecule is small enough to get through, um, even like, like what, like a 10 nano, whatever the heck, you know, micron, some insane like life straw level filter filter like a membrane filter because it's not like a chunk of something it's not you know a living organism a, a bacteria i'm pretty sure that individual bpa molecules are smaller than viruses and viruses can get through those but like reverse osmosis or um i think evaporating it and then um, basically distilling it i think that would do it but it might evaporate too why do you think it's in the groundwater everywhere this is really hard to get rid of but yeah, if you're going to do a water storage project of any kind, underground reservoir or just a single drum or a couple in your garage or some in your basement or just whatever, definitely make sure they are BPA free. And I mean, truly, really BPA free. Another thing, if you're, you know, that worried about it, or I don't know, you want to keep it away from your kids, you're like, let's go with this all natural, I don't know, Kirkland signature organic coconut water, for example, because that's sitting right in front of me. It's made with folded paper. Isn't that wonderful? It's basically non-corrugated cardboard. It's probably recycled. Wow. First of all, the spout is plastic. And secondly, the inside is laminated. So the waterproofing can contain it. So in summary, marketing is a lie. The government is 10 years behind everyone. And everyone and everything is trying to kill you. Okay, it's not quite that insane, but like, this is bad. I mean, this is a bad situation. But the one thing, especially for anybody interested in food storage, water storage, or, you know, anything like that, anything involving long shelf lives and improper temperatures and no HVAC and grid down and stuff like that, you don't want to suddenly um, have, you know, monstrous amounts of BPA in your body with no medical care. I mean, in large doses, they know that it'll cause heart disease, diabetes, all kinds of reproductive harm. It, it's awful. BPA can make it through the intense filtering that is in the umbilical cord, so that's fun. You want to talk about the, the fastest growth and development rate? It's not after you're born. But uh, the, the one obscure thing that I heard quite a while ago, this is a really weird study, but I think it was repeated and they found it is actually peer-reviewed and true. Although, strangely enough, I couldn't find it. What we do know is that a thermal receipt paper, so almost all receipts given out anywhere contain BPA. So if you don't need the receipt, don't grab it. If they say, do you want it? No. If you work as a cashier, I don't know, try not to touch it. Cause that exposure every single day, like a hundred times a day, it's not good. But this study found out that if you use alcohol hand sanitizer, so, you know, everybody's doing that these days, duh. And then touch thermal receipt paper. The amount absorbed into your skin is approximately 1000 times higher. Now, I couldn't find the study, so I can't quote, like, is that a thousand times higher than practically nothing? Or is it pretty much equivalent to eating the receipt paper? Well, let's just say I haven't been doing that. 
I'm glad a lot of companies are going to the whole emailed receipt thing. Or you know what? I don't mess with paper receipts because they kind of fade over about a year or two anyway. And if they're stored above like 100 temp uh, degree temperatures for even a little bit, they will be blank. For any tracked expenses like business, I just put them in digitally or review the credit card statement at the end of the month and just put them into QuickBooks. Also, I wouldn't recommend QuickBooks. It's awful. So just more fun information at the end there for you. So um, if you found this video helpful and informative, leave a like, maybe subscribe, check out more content on my channel. And if you thought it wasn't, you're wrong. Why'd you watch it this far then? Seriously, who am I even talking to at this point? So hey, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next video.